Hello, everyone, and welcome to our next session of Home Bible Fellowship. You're just stuck with me this week. Matthew actually has a migraine this morning, and so we, we pray for him. He's had a lot on. Uh, I think he's been out about every night this past week. I was on holiday this past week, and so he gets lumped with doing everything. But um, it's good to be back with you this week and uh, hit the ground running. Uh, as we start this week, uh, why don't you go ahead and uh, share life. One of the, the brilliant things about Home Bible Fellowship is is uh, as Christians, we, we gather together in groups like this. And the Bible commands us not just to, to share the word, not just to, to study uh, the Bible uh, and, and, and all of that, but we're also called to share our lives uh, as well as the gospel. And uh, so we're not just here to do a religious activity, uh, but we are here to worship the Lord and to fellowship with one another and to share life. And uh, that means the joys that we share, we rejoice with one another. It means the trials and the burdens we share, we bear them together. And so as we begin, let's do as we normally do and sharing some roses and thorns that we've experienced maybe in these past couple of weeks. Uh, that means some blessings that, that we rejoice and thank God for uh, and also some trials and challenges that maybe we're going through. Um, a few things that have been going on, obviously this has been a holiday week for me. It's a pretty light week in many respects. Had a great time uh, catching up with Johnny B. And uh, he got a new truck, and he took me uh, uh, out and about, and we had a, a good time together. I hadn't really caught up with John in a long time, so close friends, uh, always thankful for that. Had a good time with, with the girls as well. We, we had a good time. Uh, we went out to Livingston to the shops and watched a film, and just having these blessings of time with family uh, are wonderful things. And so uh, maybe share some joys and also some trials in your life just now. Well, as we uh, go on, uh, we are going to be back in 1 Peter. That's where Matthew preached to us from uh, this past Sunday. And so we're going to be in 1 Peter chapter 2. Uh, what I want us to do is to read the Bible together. So I want you to read in 1 Peter chapter 2. The context of this is we're going to start in verse 9. In verse 9, and I want you to read from verse 9 until verse 25. So read together. 1 Peter chapter 2, starting in verse 9 and finishing in verse 25. Well, as we look at God's Word together, the, the context of really what we're going to be looking at and what we, we started last week whenever I preached to us um, about uh, sinful desires, sinful passions of the flesh, as verse 11 tells us here, uh, he says here, Beloved, I urge you as sojourners and exiles to abstain from passions of the flesh, which wage war against your soul. And in verse 12 there, he commands Christians not just to abstain or not do uh, what our sinful desires desire to do, but he commands us what to do instead. In verse 12, he says, Keep your conduct among the Gentiles honorable, so that when they speak against you as evildoers, they may see your good deeds and glorify God on the day of visitation. So again, the, that's the sort of uh, command that, that we looked at last Sunday, and then just yesterday, or, or Sunday past, um, Matthew led us looking at a particular application of that um, in verses 13 to verse 25. So this is kind of what Peter does, is he get, kind of gives a command, abstain from sinful desires that wage war against your soul, and instead do good, replace those behaviors with things that glorify God and are an example uh, displaying God and his character to the Gentiles or to the lost people. But then he, he gives uh, some challenging application, particularly talking about in verse 13 to 17, about how we view the government. And so that's really the, the first part that we're going to talk about tonight. In verse 13 to 17, he commands Christians, Peter commands uh, the followers of Jesus here, to be subject for the Lord's sake, to every human institution, and he says whether it's to the emperor or whether it's to governors, uh, and he, he talks about the role of government there, and he says, for this is the will of God for you, that by doing good you should put to silence the ignorant talk of foolish people. 
And then he goes on and talks about honor everyone, love the brotherhood, fear God, and honor the emperor. We've said a lot of times how the emperor at that time uh, was Nero. Uh, he would, in, in the, you know, 10 to 20 years later, be the one who would severely end up killing Peter uh, and would behead Paul. And so, so this is the context. So if we think, whatever we might think about Boris, whatever we might think about Nicola, whatever we might think about the SNP or the Labour or the Greens or the Tories or whatever, this is far worse than any uh, governor that has ever lived in our lifetime uh, that we've ever experienced in the Western world. So I suppose what I, I want us to talk about is what is our thoughts on, on how do we do this? I don't want to start political discussions. That's not really the, 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 the place here. It isn't necessarily to talk about your views of the government, this, that, and the other. If you want to share, that's absolutely fine. But rather than just talking about our political aims, be they uh, right wing or left wing or middle, whatever it is, how as Christians should we and can we honor the government even if we completely disagree with their policies and what they're pushing and their agenda. So how can we do this? So let's talk about um, that and, and how we can specifically honor and care for and be good citizens uh, to glorify God uh, in these ways. Let's discuss that. Well, as he goes on here, uh, we're told not just to honor God, not just to abstain from our sinful desires and to do good uh, in our view of how we honor the government. But also, he, he talks in verses 18 and following specifically about, um, he, he talks to slaves and masters. Now, in Matthew, in the sermon, he explained how this wasn't chattel slavery that you might be familiar with that, that happened, you know, in... in, uh, in the, the British Empire and in the Americas uh, in the, the 17, 1800s. It specifically was talking about indentured servanthood. Um, in the Roman Empire, that was kind of a, a normal thing to do is, is to pay off a debt. You, would sell, you could sell yourself into slavery and you could work off your debt and earn your freedom in various ways. And so this was in some ways a legal contract for employment uh, for some people. And so, so basically the way that we apply these passages um, it, it can really be like, how are we as workers? Now, I realize some of you watching this are going to be retired, but at the same time, uh, the, the principles herein still apply to us in life, don't they? So as we think about this, look at verses 18 uh, to verse 20, for example. He says, servants, we could say the employees, for example, be subject to your masters or your employers with all respect, not only to the good and gentle, but to also the unjust. For this is a gracious thing, when, mindful of God, one endures sorrows while suffering unjustly. For what credit is it to you if, when you sin, you are beaten for it and you endure, but if you do good and suffer for it, you endure? This is a gracious thing in the sight of God. As we think about this topic and this, this passage um, here, I think, well, maybe this is just me, but in, in our lives at times, we can compartmentalize our Christianity. We can see our relationship with Jesus and kind of our, our church life as something that we just do on a Sunday or in our spiritual disciplines and our prayer time and in our worship time. But actually, this uh, passage, Peter really brings home the fact that walking with Jesus really impacts our everyday life. We can glorify God, you know, in, in how we deal with and, and drive the car, as Matthew brought out on Sunday, and, and how we're going to obey the laws of the land and how we're going to honor um, the government. Uh, obeying Jesus and, and honoring Jesus and, and, and living a Christian life is, is when we get up in the morning on a Monday morning and how we go to work and how we are as employees uh, and how, how you as maybe an employer are to your staff. We can glorify God in, in all of these areas. And so walking with Jesus is not just something that we do on the Lord's Day, but it's something we do every day. And so, <clears throat> and so as we uh, pause the video just now and discuss, you know, in your own work life, 
Um, maybe you've had an experience where you've had a difficult time at work, where you've had unjust employers. You know, maybe you've had uh, a time as an employer yourself where you've, you've had employees. How, how does your walk with Jesus, how should it affect the way that we are uh, in these situations, in situations of, of people who treat us right and who don't treat us right? How can we glorify God uh, in put into practice these pas- this passage that, that we're talking about here? Discuss that just now. The last thing we see in this passage is really uh, pointing us all to Jesus. It says in verse uh, 21 and following, it says, For to this you have been called, because Christ also suffered for you, leaving you an example, so that you might follow in his footsteps. It says, He committed no sin, no deceit was found in his mouth. When he was reviled, he did not revile in return. When he suffered, he did not threaten. But he continued entrusting himself to the one who judges justly. He himself bore our sins in his body on the tree so that we might die to sin and live to righteousness. By his wounds you have been healed. For you were like straying sheep, but now you have returned to the shepherd and overseer of your souls. As we finally look at this last bit, in, in how, obviously, the, the slaves and masters, the employer-employee relationships, or whether we're dealing with governments who mistreat us and, and chastise us and, and um, you know, don't, don't think highly of Christians, in all of these situations, really what we're called to do as Christians is to, to follow Jesus, to not just believe in him, but to walk in him, to every day follow his example to deny ourselves, take up our cross, and follow. So looking at verses 21 to 25, uh, finally finish your time together by talking together and saying, what are some areas in your own life where maybe God is calling you to follow the example of Jesus? What relationships do you have? What situations do you face in your own life? And how can we pray for one another as we close uh, that we would be able uh, to glorify God and to follow Jesus' example as he glorified his Father.